Hello. So I've just done this really basic, quick um, tutorial to show you how to make what is fundamentally a book bag. Um, just so that you can keep your kids' stuff in one place together and separated from other children's while you're homeschooling because it just takes over the house otherwise. And I don't know about you, but my kids have book bags already and they've got stuff in that I'm not prepared to sort through at the moment so I'm avoiding that so I just want something else. It's also um, it's a novice project you don't have to have any special skills for this at all um, you need to have a sewing machine, straight stitch, zigzag stitch, thread, fabric and some velcro um, and that that's really all you need. Scissors, pins, that's it, that's it. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. Um, let's begin. So I've cut my two main rectangles out here. So these are gonna be for the body of the bag. So these are 16 inches across and 12 inches down. So I'm now going to cut out two pieces for the flap. Now then, I'm just going to fold that differently so I've got a little bit less waste. Rather conveniently, this is going to be six inches, um, six inches deep, which is the exact width of my quilting ruler. That's not why I chose that measurement though. So it's going to be. 15 and a half inches across because we don't want it sticking out over the sides of the bag. I'm just going to cut a little bit more than I need and then I'll tidy up the edges afterwards. Mine's going to be slightly out because I'm literally just using the measurements from my quilting ruler, which um, I think are not exactly the same. Yes, yeah, very slightly smaller. I think it's to do with quilting seam allowances and things like that. I don't really know why it's like that because I'm not a quilter, but I am aware that it's my quilting ruler measurements aren't completely accurate. But it's like going to be a few millimetres difference and that won't make any difference to the functionality of your bag. Right, so you've got two pieces for the body here and two pieces for the flap. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut two pieces of Velcro. Um, and what I am going to do is cut I'll just tidy up that end. I'm going to cut two pieces that are four inches long of the fluffy bit. pieces that are two inches long of the hook bit. The reason I'm doing that is because I want the bag to still fasten when it's fuller. Um, however, I don't want to have loads of this hook one exposed so I'm going to use this fluffy one as the area that you can adjust how far the flap closes over depending on how full it is. Um, and then all of the hook one will be covered no matter where it is on there without collecting 
everything from its surroundings, which is really irritating. So that's literally all we need to cut out because it's a very simple bag. So first of all, I'm going to take the two flap pieces. So this is 15 and a half inches by six inches. And we're going to leave one long edge unstitched. So we're going to go round in a C shape all the way around here. We'll back stitch at the beginning, back stitch at the end. I'm just going to put a few pins in to roughly hold it in place. Not the good pins because I can't find them yet. I wonder how how many things I'm going to have to make before I realise all the stuff that I usually use that's missing and find it and give it a new home. Oh god, it's like moving house again. So we're not going to do any fancy seam work, overlocking, no French seams, nothing like that. These are probably not even going to survive a wash because the fabric will fray. It's just something really quick and easy that somebody with very basic skills can do if you have a sewing machine and some thread and some scissors and fabric and nothing else, you'll manage it. Oh, and Velcro, you need that. So I've just pinned it around three edges. Um, it doesn't matter what seam allowance you do because this is gonna be a bag for A4 sheets and I've given it about just over three inches either, well, all together, wiggle room. Um, so, you know, whatever seam allowance you're happy with, probably go towards half an inch because we're not finishing the edges um, and you'll, you'll still have plenty of space so I'll just stitch this very quickly I'm going to put it on a slightly bigger stitch length okay I'm just taking my pins out as I go along The machine's making a slightly clunky sound, which means it's unhappy with something. I'm going to investigate that in a minute. So all you need to do when you get to the corners while you're stitching is stop half an inch away from the edge that you're moving towards. Um, if your machine doesn't naturally stop with the needle down in the fabric, which some of the modern ones do now, then just roll your wheel until the needle is in, then lift up the press of it and then you can swivel it and the needle will hold the um, centre of the corner that you're rotating quite nicely. Then, there's my nice scissors. Right. All we're going to do is snip off these corners just a bit. You don't need to go close to the stitches. It just removes a bit of the bulk where you're going to turn it out. Now this would look, look a lot tidier if you already fixed the Velcro to the outside piece and then the stitching from the Velcro didn't show all the way through. But um, when you get a lot of paper in these and you've got Velcro stitched to the outside but not the lining, the whole thing just shifts and loses its shape and it won't do the job. So we'll not worry about aesthetics too much, we'll just stitch it through both layers, deal with the um, the back of the stitching on the lining side looking a bit unsightly 
and put up with it basically. So I've turned that out, that's what we're left with. Um, what I'm going to do next is just make sure that all of these seams are pushed out as far as they can be and I'm just going to iron it all so that everything's nice and straight and then we'll do the Velcro. Okay, that's ironed. I used this to push the edges out. I can't remember what it's called though. I've got a big round one that's called a ham and I don't know if that means that this one is like a sausage or a chorizo. I'm vegan so I, I might go with nut roast. So I've got my nut roast and shoved it in like that and then just held the iron on a little bit so that then when I flattened it out the seam's already pushed out and you don't have to go digging for it. So that's that. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to top stitch around the edge. You don't have to do that but it will pretty it up a little bit. Uh, where's my pedal gone? Oh, I haven't got used to this place at all. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go maybe about three millimetres from the edge. not necessary to backstitch for this because it's not really uh, structural. So that's just keeping the edge in position. Right, Velcro next. Okay, I have put the Velcro in position on the so small hook pieces onto the flap. These are placed one inch away from the edge on the side and half an inch away from the, the bottom edge of the flap. If you can see that, maybe should have used contrasting colour fabric. And these ones don't have a seam allowance yet, so we're going to allow for that. So we've placed those one and a half inches and a whole inch from there, okay? I have used spray adhesive to fix these in position while I sew them on, but you don't need to go and buy spray adhesive, just pin them or even hold them in place. If they're not even that accurate, it's still gonna work. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select a zigzag stitch. I'm going to reduce the stitch length, which will bring the zigzags closer together, which creates something called satin stitch probably not going to go for a strict satin stitch because it uses loads of thread and it's more um, for aesthetics but I'll go closer to a satin stitch by bringing the stitch length down to like one and a half maybe or two millimeters um, and you can keep it quite wide keep it maybe three and a half or four as long as what you want to do is just bind the edges down um, and again you're going to Turn it at the corners just by leaving the needle down in the fabric, lifting up the presser foot and then turning it. So I'll just do a quick adjustment on my machine because it's a bit unhappy with something and then I'll do that. Right, I've given her a new bobbin. Another hiccup of moving all of my work stuff is that I have bad bobbins in the box and I didn't realise. So I've given her one of the ones she really likes and she's happy again. Okay, so I'm just going to show the stitching. Here we go. You don't need to back stitch because you can just overlap where you start and where you finish. So I'm stopping on the outside corner. As you can see, the needle's down, press the foot up and then you can just swivel it around the corners. Okay. 
I'm just going to go around the first corner again to overlap it. And that's that. So it's just like caught in all of the rough edges so it won't be scratchy. I'm just going to snip off the tails. Okay, I'm going to go and stitch the rest of them for the flap and for the bag front um, and then I'll be back. Okay, so now I've got this is the back piece so it doesn't have any velcro on it so for argument's sake we're going to say that this is the right side of the fabric i maybe should have chosen something with a pattern to make that clear but what we're going to do is we're going to lay the flap centrally with the top edges together and with the velcro up so the side with the velcro on the flap is the wrong side that's going to be out of sight and this is the right side. So basically we've got right sides together. And you should find that you've got a gap around the edge. And I'm just going to pin it in a couple of places. Now I'm going to stitch across the top and I'm just going to keep to the seam allowance that I've been using. For mine, it's um, it's less than half an inch. I tend to just go by the edge of my presser foot and less, unless a pattern calls for a specific seam allowance. So mine's probably like two eighths, three eighths of an inch, something like that. Um, it's just slightly less than what I've got free here because obviously I don't want to I don't want the flap to um, to be further in, to be further out than the seam allowance, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch across here. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm, what I'm going to do is lift that over and I'm going to just tuck the seam at the bottom downwards. And then I'm going to take that over to the iron and put some tension on it and iron it and now I'm just going to top stitch along here but I'm going to go all the way from this edge to this edge not just the flap because what this is also doing is it's hemming the top side of the bag and what we'll do after that is we will also hem the other side of the bag to exactly the same stitch allowance as you've done on the top. So I'm going to top stitch this, press this over with the iron and then top stitch this as well. Okay, so that's top stitched. As you can see, I've done a chunky top stitch because I want it to really act as um, a hem as well. And I've done that the same distance so it's a hem it's an ineffective hem but at least it marries up with the top stitching so if you put the back piece down and then you put the so this is right side up velcro side down then you're going to get the front piece and you're going to put that right side down velcro side up and get these two corners to meet and pop a pin in those I will tell you that this is not the tidiest way of hemming the top of any kind of bag usually this would be hemmed right at the end all the way around in one go so that you don't end up with these spiky bits sticking into the bag it folds them all away nicely but if you're a novice and you're just trying to do something pretty basic then trying to do a neat hem 360 neat hem all the way around once it's all assembled is a lot harder so I'm just doing it this way to make it manageable in terms of assembly if you want to uh, leave the top hem to the end 
to to make it neater you can do that but you will have to um you will have to attach the flap uh to the back piece like that just uh, baste it on then make the bag then turn it like that and press it at the same time that you press your front hem and then do the top stitching at the same time that you go around all the way around it but for the purposes of this and with it being a, a video for complete novices with a sewing machine we're going to do it like this it doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to keep all the paperwork from school in one place that's all it's got to do so i'm going to go round from here to there to there to there for this job it's important that you backstitch where you start backstitch where you finish and don't go further in than where your flap sticks out all right so i've done that um and i've uh, turned it out and i've pressed the corners i haven't clipped the corners on the inside this time because um, I'm a big fan of clipping and notching, it's great for getting the right shape on, on seams and hems but if you're not going to be top stitching afterwards then it leaves them a little bit vulnerable um, to fraying so I haven't done it on there. All I've done is use something pointy but not sharp to push the corners out and then just gone over it with an iron. So that's it. I mean, it's basically a book bag but my kids' book bags are bust into the seams full of everything from last year that they've because they've they've not used their book bags at all since um the first lockdown so that it's all just full of their old stuff and i can't bring myself to spring clean them yet um and also there's going to be loads of books in there that need returning to the school and that will make me feel quite bad about myself so i'm avoiding that so i'm just gonna have these for at home for their homeschooling stuff and then all the constant pieces of paper that have to get printed off for their online assignments can go in there and then if they need to refer to them or whatever it's all there um i've used curtain lining because that's what i've got and i just wanted to do a demonstration um go for something a bit stronger i would recommend uh yeah like old curtain fabric is brilliant um or a thicker cotton a poplin you could use denim, but you won't be able to get enough fabric to do that out of an old pair of jeans. Um, but if you're buying fabric, then denim, poplin, canvas, um, or upholstery fabric, curtain fabric, that sort of thing. Just bear in mind that if you're using heavy fabrics, you might need to change to a stronger needle. And that's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. All right. Hope it helps. Bye.